everyone. We have discussed that having multiple prices by segments helps improve profit. In this topic, we're going to talk about how do we segment. First, let's look at a few discussion questions. Which segments are more price sensitive? Personal versus business travelers for air tickets. New parents versus experienced parents on diaper purchase. Light users versus heavy users of soda. Students or retired customers versus employed customers in general. Pause the video and consider your answers. For the first pair, personal travelers are more price sensitive. For the second pair, experienced parents would have more diaper purchase experience. They would have seen more diapers. As a result, they tend to be more price sensitive. For the third pair, heavy users are more familiar with the pricing history of soda, so they tend to be more price sensitive. For the fourth pair, students or retired customers have no stable source of income, and they tend to be more price sensitive. Here's another discussion question. Stainway, this was a long time ago, a tiny but well-regarded New York piano maker in the 1950s grew quickly after Doretta Stainway, the founder's daughter, got the idea of offering free piano lessons with the sale of each piano. Can you explain this as a segmentation price tactic? And what are the segments? Pause the video and consider your answers. To think about this question, we should consider what kind of customers need a piano lesson, and what kind of customers will not be interested in a free piano lesson. Therefore, by offering free piano lessons, Stainway was segmenting customers into those who are already able to play piano and those who cannot play piano. For those who cannot play piano, a piano is less useful. Therefore, they would be more price sensitive. By offering the free piano lessons, they are essentially offering a rebate to the customers who cannot play piano. It is equivalent to charging those customers a lower price. In this lecture, we are going to consider five different ways to practice price customization. By customer, by location, by time of purchase, by quantity, and by product design. First, customize by customer types. This is often based on observable characteristics of the buyer, and we would know which kind of buyers are more price sensitive. For example, as a UH student, you get Microsoft Office for free. And if you want to purchase it from Amazon, it actually costs $285. Because Microsoft can easily identify who are college students and who are not, they can separate these two types of customers and offer them different prices. On this dimension, in order to select the segmentation variables, we need to be careful. The key is to separate customers into groups with different price sensitivities. For example, in the case of office, students versus regular customers, we separate them by the ability to pay. And movie theaters sometimes offer matinee, so you get lower ticket prices in the afternoon instead of in the evening. This is essentially a separation by age. Retirees who are not working can go to see a movie in the afternoon. Another important thing is the segmentation variables should be observable without great expenses. For example, Adobe Acrobat Pro has a different price for new buyers versus existing customers. And finally, we may induce customers to volunteer the objective information. An example would be using coupons or rebates. Customers who are more price sensitive would seek out coupons and rebates. Customers who are less price sensitive, probably more time sensitive, are not going to use those things. 
The second way is to customize by purchase location. The reason is customers at different purchase locations tend to have different price sensitivity. For example, English textbooks with the same content are of vastly different prices in the United States versus India. Both use English textbooks. And the Netflix has a different price in the US versus in India. And the different price levels in different countries can be protected by tracking the watcher's IP address. And of course, medicines are of very different prices in the US versus the rest of the world. For this customization, one needs to select segmentation variables to ensure different segments purchase at different locations and uh, the cost of arbitrage should be high. For example, shipping a book from India to the US may be more expensive than purchasing from the United States alone or may cost too much time for shipping. Another way of price customization by location is Uber. Uber actually uses both location and time. So they have a price surcharge up to multiple times of the regular cost based on the location and the time when people use the app. The third way of price customization is to customize by the time of purchase. We're going to get into more details about each one of these. Three examples of customization by time are peak load pricing. So airlines may charge different prices on regular flights where people on a business trip usually would take versus a red-eye flight when people traveling for leisure may not care so much about when the flight will be. And the yield management customize the price based on when the customers purchase a ticket. This is widely used by airlines and hotels. And finally, skimming pricing for a new product because people who purchase a new product very early tend to be less price sensitive, so you can charge a much higher price on those very new products. For example, flat TV, they used to cost a lot of money. A TV that cost $5,000 three years ago may cost less than $1,000 nowadays. And price customization by time needs to avoid resale. For example, airline tickets and hotel rooms are both booked with customer identity. Here is an example of how the same kind of seats on a plane may get vastly different prices based on how early the ticket is booked. Let's just look at two seats in the first class. And on the right, 11 days before the flight, it was $855.97. On the left, the same day booking, it costs $1,248. And this pattern applies to every single seat from business class to economy class throughout the plane. Here is an example of a dynamic pricing scheme that Coca-Cola actually considered. Coca-Cola is considering a new pricing scheme at its 2.8 million vending machines by charging different prices at different times. The two prices are a hot day price and a cold day price. Let's say the demands on hot days and cold days differ. Here are the two demand functions. Let's say in a year, half the time it's hot, half the time it's cold. For each machine on a day, the demand on a hot day is 300 minus two times price. On cold day, the demand is 180 minus two times price. So the demand potential is higher on a hot day and lower on a cold day. The economic rationale of charging two different prices is when it's hot, a higher price would increase the profit margin, resulting in higher profit. When it's cold, charging a lower price would induce demand, also potentially increase profit. Seems to be beneficial on both ends. How do you like this idea? Well, first, let's run some calculations to see how much difference it makes in profitability. In the one price baseline case, we have profit equals price minus variable cost times demand substituting in the variable cost of 20 cents. And half the time, the demand is a hot day. Half the time, the demand is from a cold day. So we complete this calculation. What we get is price minus 20 cents times this overall demand function. We have developed how to calculate the optimal price. By applying that formula, you can find that the optimal price is 70 cents and the profit per vending machine per day is 5,000 cents, that is $50. Next, 
we'll look at what happens when you charge two different prices, one price on a hot day and a different price on a cold day. So the total profit is equal to price high minus 20 cents times the demand, price low minus the variable cost times the demand. And again, we can take two derivatives and find out the two optimal prices. The optimal prices are 85 cents on hot days and 55 cents on cold days. And then the maximized profit is 5,450 cents per machine per day. What difference does it make? Let's compare the two different conditions, two prices versus one price. So the incremental profit per day per machine is 5,450 cents minus 5,000 cents, that is 450 cents. This does not look like a lot of money, but assuming 2,000 smart vending machines with two prices, and the annual incremental profit would be equal to 450 cents actual profit per day per machine, times 200,000 vending machines, times 365 days. That is an incremental profit of $328.5 million. Even for a large company like Coca-Cola, this is a huge amount of money. Now, after this calculation, how do you like this idea? Interestingly, although this idea is economically sound and highly profitable, it was never implemented by Coca-Cola in the market. The reason behind this is people's fairness perceptions. On a hot day, when people purchase cold soda at a higher price, they feel like they have been price gouged, and people really don't like that idea. And in order to avoid that kind of controversy, Coca-Cola decided not to implement this dynamic pricing scheme in the market. The fourth way to customize price is to customize by quantity. The most straightforward way to implement this is to offer a quantity discount or sometimes a step discount. In both ways, we're offering different prices based on the total size of the demand. And the second way is what we call a two-part tariff, where you charge a fixed fee and then in addition to charge a usage-based fee. We will have much more in-depth discussion on these different topics. To customize by quantity, it's important not to hinder competition. There are laws restricting quantity discount. And second, the product must be easily resold or stored for later use, so as to encourage large quantity purchase and inventory build up. The fifth way to segment customers is to customize by product design. Some customers may want unique features and are less price sensitive. We can conduct a price line differentiation, for example, Ford F-150 has multiple, actually six, different models. Second is to possibly introduce different versions of the same product, for example, the book A Time to Kill. The key for this segmentation is to understand customer needs and willingness to pay for unique features. The price difference can be much higher than cost difference. Going back to you don't have to charge a cost plus based pricing. That's a quick discussion on five different ways to segment customers. Here are some important issues that you should consider. First, it's not always about economic viability. In the case of hot and cold day pricing, it is not the profitability that is the problem. It is the fairness perception that is the problem. Secondly, once you start price customization, sometimes it creates loopholes. For example, sometimes the air ticket prices can be so different that a leisure traveler would be better off to stay an extra night at a hotel on a Saturday and save on flight costs. That is a loophole airlines have to consider when they charge different prices on different days. The third issue to consider is the cost of identification. So far, for all the examples we have talked about, when we consider customer types, our examples were all based on customer characteristics that are very easy to identify. And the fourth thing to consider is the legality. When we segment by customers, do not use sensitive demographic variables, design a press menu, and encourage self-selection instead of forcing choices onto customers. And when we customize by quantity, there are legal restrictions that do not allow hinder competition. 
That's our discussion on how to segment customers. Thank you. I'll see you next time.